Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Rafe Mayer, BC's longest-running number one radio talk show host. In fact, Canada's number one longest-running talk show host. Also a former BC cabinet minister. Welcome back to the show, Rafe. Thanks very much, Jim. Nice to be here. The Donald Trump-Hillary show, of course, gets more interesting day by day. The latest revelation, not only did he look into the dressing room of the Miss America contestants, he looked into the dressing rooms of the Miss Teen America contestants. I don't know. If you can reach a level of disgusting, that's got to be it. You know, Jim, this is probably the most difficult thing I've ever had to comment upon because there is absolutely no precedent that I know of for this kind of behavior. Uh, th- this man is, is, is repulsive, and I suppose the surprise is that he's been able to get this far politically. Uh, when you take a look at <clears throat> the system in the major parties in Canada, we can certainly wind up with some lunkheads, but usually these kind of things prevent the candidacy in the first place. Now, maybe not always, but that's that's what you think. But I have never seen anything where the candidate started out from you know, from day one as an absolute bore and got worse day by day by day. And uh, now, of course, the question becomes an interesting one, uh, what's going to happen because of, uh, in my mind, two things. Surprisingly, there are a lot of people in the United States that still think Trump is the answer which tells you how much they hate the establishment that is now there, as represented by Hillary Clinton, who they probably also hate from another movie. Uh, you know, that that's the, the first thing that uh, you have to think about. The second thing is, what happens to the Republican Party? Now, there will be a great many listeners, I'm sure, and like me, when I think about it uh, uh, idly, who will say, who cares? Uh, well, you got to care. It's a two-party system, and it only works well when you've got the... Uh, yin and yang that goes with that and once you have one party start to dominate it's very difficult to stop that domination once it gets going and i think it would be very bad if the republicans for whom i have absolutely no political sympathy were not to be able to survive and uh, perhaps uh, restore a little of that image of lincoln they're so prom- they're so proud of but it's uh, it's a it's an absolutely <laughs> i thought about this before you called I was like, what the hell can you say about this i mean it's it's, it's, it's just never, it's un, totally unprecedented. Well, yeah, and the latest polls give Hillary a, a slight lead, but again, slight. There's still 36, uh, 39% support for Trump, despite all this. Well, it, the, I, I'm sure there will be some polls coming in after his latest shenanigans, which may reduce it, but whatever it re- is reduced to, it'll still be remarkable that a man like this could command any more than the lunacy fringe, which you normally think about 10%, I guess maybe they've got a higher lunacy fringe in the United States than, than other places. But, I mean, this is just unbelievable. Never mind his personal behavior. If you, if you just uh, eliminated that from your thoughts for a moment and you were a voter, and you ask yourself, how is my president going to act as the leader of the world, responsible for keeping the peace of the world, a man with, who's the commander-in-chief of the most powerful nation in the world? How is he going to behave on the world scene if we elect Trump? I mean, that alone, even if if, if Trump were a lovely, likable guy, that would be enough for me to say, uh, you know, not for me, thanks very much. But when you pile on that, all of this stuff, uh, he he is just a disgusting man. He really truly is. And uh, I still marvel that there, as you do, there are so many Americans that uh, they either like him or more likely they hate what they've got so much they're prepared to put anybody in. 
Well, also, if he's such a great businessman, I have yet to see anybody come forward saying it was an honor and a privilege to do business with him. No, I, I don't think that you'll ever find that. And uh, he's a businessman the likes of which uh, none of us want our, our kids to be like. Now, I've never been uh, uh, a great hero worshiper of, of businessmen just for the sake of being businessmen. But, you know, you do expect some sort of reasonable ethical behavior, uh, at least paying your bills, particularly paying the, the little people who's, livelihoods depend upon i mean this this man is uh and, and you expect him to pay his taxes uh that's that something's pretty pretty basic in this world now he, he's got absolutely no admirable qualities that i can think of and he certainly shows absolutely no uh propensity to be the united states uh, president I, I just there's there's nothing in his background that would make anybody feel that he'd be a good choice for that that i can see well, Trump has also stated that if he was president, the first thing he would do is jail Hillary. Now her lawyer is looking to see if that's actually uh, an actionable statement. Well, that that's probably about as stupid a thing as you could ever say. And, uh, you know, there are lots of pretty bitter fights in, in election campaigns, and, uh, and particularly in American ones over the years where there have been a lot of things that uh, have gone on that people are on each side are thoroughly pissed off with, et cetera. But you never do that. I mean, it's just this. I mean, it's just unbelievable that anybody could talk that way. And, uh, uh, well, I, I guess it isn't unbelievable, Jim. We're going to have to get used to it. There's nothing this guy won't say or do. But when I watched him do that, uh, I didn't see the actual debate. I had to, for you, I watched it yesterday morning. Thank you very much. Watched the whole damn thing. And my wife came down and said, what are you doing watching this at breakfast? And I said, well, watch this. And I, and she watched this thing, this, this threat to Hillary, and she said, my God, he can't do that. And I said, well, he's just done it. You know, this is just an absolute no, no. And I, I would think that, it's sort of, I'm, I'm repeating myself, I guess, Jim, but any one of these things I would have thought would so put off the American people, they want no more of them. Uh, and this is just, this is one that standing alone is bad enough, but, uh, somehow he can accumulate all of this crap and, and, uh, get away with it. Well, uh, one of the people I interview on a regular basis says Trump can't say, oh, it's the media's fault. They're, they're twisting his words. These are his own words and they go back decades. Oh, there's no question about that. Uh, he, uh, he's made his, his own bed here and he's got to sleep in it. Uh, everything is recorded with, with him in, in, in television now. And none of, none of it's out of context. He, he doesn't give anybody a chance to quote him out of context. You know, he's a man of about 15 or 20 words. And, and that's that. And uh, you can't misinterpret what he says in 20 year, words. They're, they're all terrible. And he, he applauds himself for saying them, pats himself on the back, and essentially says, if you don't like it, that's too bad. So he's on record for all of these things. No question about that. And uh, he's going to have to live with it. The contestants from The Apprentice say they all had to sign confidentiality agreements. There's a $5 million penalty if they disclose what happened behind the scenes. Couldn't some billionaire who likes Hillary, like Mark Cuban, say, I'll pay your legal bills if you do it? Well, I guess that can happen, Jim. Anything can happen, I suppose. I, uh, they're uh, a pretty litigious bunch down there, and that, that certainly uh, the thought has got to cross anybody's mind. If you could find a way into court, do it, and that's one way it could be done. But uh, we just have to wait and see on that. I Every once in a while, I have to tell myself, Rafe, have a little more faith in the American people and to assume that that's going to happen. Well, that uh, little statement to myself lasts for about three minutes, and then I hear Trump again. But, uh, no, I, 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 it could happen, sure. It could happen, and Hillary could be suing uh, Trump, too. There's all sorts of things that could happen like that. And, of course, uh, President Obama, before he leaves office, could also issue a blanket pardon for Hillary, just like Gerald Ford did for Nixon. Oh, I think he could, and I wouldn't be surprised that he will. Uh, you know, it's, it's not something that you, you like to see. I don't, I don't like pardons like that. I, mean, I don't mind pardons when they really are. Uh, a person has served a lot of time for something and it's been very hard on the family. They paid their dues and all the rest of it. I'm talking about the ordinary walk of life, you know, that you have. But when politicians get forgiven before anybody has a real chance to test them, I think that's wrong. But I think Obama probably will do that. And uh, I'll tell you, I watched Obama uh, give a speech today, and uh, he's he's picking them up and laying them down. He's a he's a tough fighter, and I think that uh, you know, I, I well, I think Trump's in over his head anyway. 
Well, yes, uh, versus Obama, if it came to just class, you know who wins. Well, that's, that's, of course, that's it, you know, yeah. And they, well, the two of them, uh, Michelle and, uh, and, uh, the president have, have just done an excellent job of showing what class is all about. And, uh, uh the contrast, uh, between him and, and Trump is, is, uh, startling. Uh, the contrast is great enough between them and, and Hillary, quite frankly. But, uh, between, uh, them and, and Trump, it's, uh, uh, I, I just can't believe that the American people would shut their eyes, think about that, and say, I don't care. Whether I liked Obama, I don't care if I was a born racist, I don't care what I was, there's no way Trump's going in there. Yeah, because they have been so very effective. And, uh, uh, I, of course, Obama, and I think, uh, probably Michelle too, but they're born performers. They got, in, they got fantastic timing. I mean, you and I have watched guys with timing in our, in our lives, or all our lives, and it's not something you can just sort of, uh, pick up overnight by reading a book. This is something that, it only comes to a few people, and they've got it, and it's a it's a it's a devastating weapon when you're when you're uh, on the stump. Right, and of course, people will give credit to the writers, but I've seen Obama come back with lines when questioned that no writer put on his mouth. Oh, no question about that. Uh, I, Obama's not going to be saying anything that he doesn't want to say, and if he wants to say it, he's going to be saying it in a way that it'll be heard. Is Hillary's best strategy just keep her mouth shut from now on? I think so. I, I think uh, keep reverting back to the main issues. Uh, you can start off, I suppose, something like, I'm really not going to bother myself with the latest things that uh, Mr. Trump was saying. But here are the issues. Here are the issues about uh, the, the race issue. Here's, here's the employment issue. Here's this issue. Let's talk about the health issue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think she's got to keep dancing back to that. She's got to keep the agenda for herself. Not let him steal it. Do you feel one of Trump's failings is that he can't stand the fact that he's up against a woman? Oh, I'm sure that's true. God, can you imagine what it'd be like if it was a black woman? Uh, you know, it's uh, the poor man must be going nuts. It's uh, Hillary is, uh, and, and Hillary has got to carry quite a load because of that. This is the the first time a woman has ever been close to being the president of the United States. And she's looking like she's going to do it. And that's quite an additional burden to bear. And I'll tell you something that you probably have noticed in the business that I've noticed, Jim, over the years, that when it comes to enemies of women succeeding, women are almost always worse than men. I, mean, I noticed that in, in, in radio. You know, when we'd have a, a really a good female broadcaster, Fanny, Fanny Keefe or somebody like that on for a while, the complaints that would come to management would be more from women than from men. And I've never understood what that psychology is. I'm sure it goes way back into psyche, and, I, and it's one of these things that time was going to eliminate. But it isn't as if Hillary could say, look, I've got every woman on the, in the United States on my side. That just is not so. So she's got a lot of burdens to bear, and I think she's doing very well under the circumstances. Well, they always say in business, if a guy is tough and mean, you know, he's a, a gritty businessman, but if a woman does it, she's a bitch. Well, that's the problem, and, and, and as often as not, I say that's said by a woman. I know I'm going to have every one of your women listeners mad at me, but I, I don't say that in an unkind way at all. Uh, uh, Wendy and I have talked about this for quite, quite a while over the years, and uh, uh, it's, it's something that puzzles me. I wish it would go away. I, I think that uh, uh, their compatriots deserve a far better break from that, and I think it's I think the fact that women sometimes oppose women has held them back more sometimes than men have, and it, it's 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 just not fair. I think Hillary has shown every possible attribute you would need to be president. That doesn't mean she's perfect. Doesn't mean that I necessarily like her, but she has shown everything that you need to be to qualify to be president of the United States. And she's a woman, so what? She should be elected, but uh, she. I'm just uh, sort of praising her in this sense. She's got a tougher road to hold than a man does. Well, the latest Trump ad shows Hillary being helped into the van after she had the uh, pneumonia attack and couldn't breathe. I can't imagine a male being held up to the same standards. Oh, look, he got hurt in a football game and, and it's being helped off on a stretcher. No. He must be weak. No, I, I, I just don't understand that sort of stuff either. When you... Think of the kind way the press has treated male presidents over the years, uh, going right back to Franklin Roosevelt when they wouldn't show him in a wheelchair, and uh, others when they're in moments of uh, of embarrassment uh, they played down. Now, 
I must admit they kind of ran away on Jerry Ford on his stumbling a bit, but that was, people took that as more as, as fun as anything else. But basically, men have got away with that. But to do that to a woman is just absolutely, you know, what was she expect to do? Take a, a long a run and jump into the car? Come on. She's, she's been sick, and we're all sick from time to time. Sometimes, some of us, all the time. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, she's got a tough road to hold. I've got a lot of admiration for her. As I say, I, I'm not particularly drawn to her as a person. I can think of other people I'm sure I would like better, and I, I see things in her background that worry me about her leadership of the world. But uh, she is so superior to anything else that's around that there shouldn't be any questions at all. And she's also the most well-traveled former Secretary of State. I haven't heard any bad words from world leaders saying, you know, I couldn't do business with Hillary or she wouldn't listen. I think she was a, a first-class Secretary of State, and that's not an easy job to, to have because you're constantly got a damned if I do and damned if I don't position in front of you. And uh, I, I, that's why I judge things like the Middle East uh, a little more gently than a lot of people do. Uh, I mean, I'm, per, I'm perplexed at what happened in Libya and so on and so forth, like most people are. But I also know, and this from tiny little personal experience, that when you're in the hot seat, it isn't always that easy to make the right decision. And uh, I, I just tell you this quick little anecdote. This has got no, nothing to do with the level she's at. I'm just talking about a, a little penny-ass politician in British Columbia. But I remember when I went to the legislature, went into cabinet, and I went back to Kamloops for the first time to sort of visit with my buddies. We all went down to the local watering hole and had a couple of drinks. And one of them said, wow, Rafe, uh, what do you think of that being in cabinet? And I said, well, I'll tell you guys, it's a hell of a lot easier to run the province from this bar than it is the cabinet room. And that, that sticks when you, you know, you could be a great secretary of state sitting back on the White House with your feet up. But it's quite another thing to be a good secretary of state when you're there eyeball to eyeball you never know when it's going to happen or what's going to happen and i think she she comported herself first in first class way and uh, uh that that stands very much to her credit i don't know if it was diefenbaker who said it but uh the quote is the art of government is skillful surgery done with blunt instruments <laughs> i think that's what, what that could be uh diefenbaker he certainly used blunt instruments but uh no that could be and i think that's very true it's very true. You you don't know what it's like until you actually get there and, and sit down and have to make uh, the bloody decisions. And even petty ones like we made in Victoria, uh, it's all the same, whether it's there or whether it's in Tehran or wherever it may be. When you're on the hot seat making that decision uh, with very little to go on, uh, you have to be given a little bit of slack. And I think uh, Hillary needs very little slack. I think she did a, a very good job as Secretary of State. And and that uh, alone, I think, qualifies her. We'll have more with Rafe Mayer right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rafe Mayer. Rafe, the honeymoon period, I believe, is over for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Two measures that just came in without consultation with the provinces or anybody else. The carbon tax and the changes to the mortgage rules that could, in theory, take a trillion dollars out of the Canadian economy overnight. You know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Jim, there never was a honeymoon. Will you know that? It was uh, it was January after we got in that I started to remind people of the great uh, act he put on in Paris and all the things we're going to do, and almost at the same time was ordering more pipelines, LNG, God knows what all. So I never did have a honeymoon for him. Now, I, I watched our local liberal MP and if I ever had a notion to give a honeymoon, uh, she did it for me. There's no, no, no possible way. This is something that I, 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 <laughs> I constantly think of Charlie Brown and Lucy in the football. Uh, we do it all the time. We're told, look, this time it's going to be different. This, this liberal government will be different than past liberal governments. And, uh, so don't worry about it. This is a different guy. Well, you know, Lucy gets the ball, puts it down, and we go up to kick it. Next thing we know, we're flattening our ass. 
It's, it's the same thing. Now, I am not saying this is an anti-liberal philosophically, because that's probably where I would be and, and was for a long time of my life. I'm talking about the Liberal Party of Canada, and uh, they only have one object, and that's to get reelected. And to do that, they do the good things in the places that will get them uh, uh, votes that matter, and they do the bad things that will get, get them bad, either no votes or votes that don't matter. And, and this is just constantly the way that they do it. Uh, it goes back uh, further than this, but uh, just take yourselves back, that you uh, folks that are a little bit older, to uh, Jim Coots and Senator uh, uh, Keith Davey in the, in the 70s and 80s, and this is just all over again, exactly the same stuff. And uh, Trudeau will uh, will uh, lie through his teeth, and he will play games and all the rest of it, and he's going to have a smile on his face, and he's going to look cute, and some people are going to say, well, at least he's better than Harper. My point is he's not better than anybody. He's just as you would have expected if you thought about him as just another liberal prime minister from central Canada. And that's what he is, and that's what he will be. We're going to have to get used to it. Well, before the election, all these women were telling me they really like Trudeau, and I asked them, so which one of his policies is your favorite? All they could tell me is that he had nice hair. Well, I, I, I think I've said enough about women today, and I don't, want, I don't want to put them down to that extent, Jim, <laughs> although I know exactly what you're saying, but I, I can tell you what I heard from people, men and women here, and this one happened to be a woman, wrote me a long letter and said, well, at least you've got to admit that he's much better than Harper. And I wrote back and I said, please tell me how. Give me some examples. What's he done that's better? Well, you know, it's, uh, then there's no answers to come. He just, they, they like the way he presents himself. And the style of a politician is often what counts more than, than brains and, and, and other equipment. And, uh, you know, but uh, he just uh, is, uh, uh, he comes from that, Central Canadian liberal establishment. My God, his father was the, it was a, a, the prime minister, and he's going to behave just exactly like he's he's programmed to behave. And uh, uh, I just don't understand why we're always so surprised. Why why are we a nation full of Charlie Browns? I just don't understand it. Well, Trudeau said he would keep the good parts of Bill C fifty one that allows the police to spy on you without a warrant. And he has kept that legislation unchanged. No outcry about that at all. Well, we don't cry out, you know, in this in this country. And this is a. It's interesting. We should be talking now. I, I just had a uh, coffee with an old old friend of mine. We were talking about politics in Canada, and I said, you know, what strikes me as amusing and and scary is there are some things we just don't talk about. Not because they're against the law or libelous or anything like that. We just don't talk about that sort of thing in Canada. Do you want an example? Sure. How about the the appointment of, the, of our current Governor General? I wrote an article pointing out that he had he'd uh, taken away from the investigation into Mulroney, the very thing everybody wanted to find out. Uh, why did he take the money? And it was a well till field that put all the various things, including the Prime Minister of the day afterwards when he heard about the terms of reference the the new governor general or about to be governor general put in said oh my god we didn't pay him enough all of those things and they, they made a, a column which didn't allege wrongdoing because there weren't facts enough to do that but alleged that it would never pass any smell test anywhere in the world my god i couldn't get anybody to pick up i got letters from people that you know in eastern canada saying you don't talk about those sort of things this is canada we don't talk about the governor general that way my question is why not What's the matter with us? The reason we don't, or the, because we don't do that, we don't ask questions about what Mr. Trudeau will be like. We don't ask questions that we ought to ask if we we're going to get answers that were going to be helpful to the way we vote and the way we behave ourselves. And uh, I find it, as, a, as an old man now, I find this very, very sad. Uh, I shouldn't be considered a maverick because I say that. That's just part and parcel of what a democracy uh, which is a free democracy, is supposed to be all about. But it isn't. Canadians have got this restraint built into them, God knows from what, that says, don't talk about that. Or if you do, just skirt around the edges. For God's sake, don't get to the meat of the matter. And uh, so we want ourselves to blame. What about the Christie Clark government not holding a fall session of the legislature? Oh, right. 
I mean, what can you say about that uh, that woman? Uh, it's uh, that person, I should say. Uh, uh, she just confounds uh, all the principles of decent government. There's no requirement that you hold uh, a, a session of the legislature, but there is a, an expectation and a, a reasonable grounds to suppose that there are things that have to be done or are better done now. Why wouldn't you hold a, a session of parliament under those uh, circumstances? Well, it's not because there aren't things to do. So it must be because it would not be convenient politically for the liberals to hold that right now with an election coming up in May. And uh, it's 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 just it, it just is so shocking. It uh, I, I don't really care for a lot of the things in the American system, Jim. But there's a lot to be said for Congress meets at such and such a time. Uh, Parliament meets at such and such a time. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot to be said, too, for the old adage, which has gone by the board, that the government calls the legislature in and the opposition is the one that adjourns it. And, and in other words, the opposition has, has the call as to how long it runs, even though there was a lot of wasted time. Wasted time is not our problem in, in democracy. Our problem is exactly the opposite. We allow the fear of any wasted time to play in, into an axiom that we will not go into the legislature because we don't have a, a, a current uh, uh, serious problem. We're not declaring war or something like that. We haven't got a serious enough problem to go back, so we're not going to go back. And uh, again, it goes back to what we are talking about just a minute ago, uh, Jim. We don't like to talk about these things. We don't like to squarely meet them. A few people do, but by and large, people don't care enough. And uh, it's uh, it's just I say again it's it's our fault. I uh, I, I I just give you one little anecdote of what of what I just said. Uh, when I was in the legislature many many years ago, in the first couple of weeks, I made an absolute ass of myself uh, on the one Friday morning in the in the legislature. And I can't remember what it was now, but it was uh, it was hooted and booed and laughed at and. The, press gallery rolls, the tears streaming down their face at the goof this guy mayor made from Kamloops. And I went home that night to Kamloops, and I thought, uh, what the hell do I do? And I finally said, well, I guess what you've got to do, Rafe, is face the music. Just go down, walk down Victoria Street, and go from store to store and say hello. And if it's raised, try to, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I did. Not one single person that I met that morning even knew the legislature was in session. That's how much interest there is in what really goes on. And uh, until we stand up and take interest in these issues and take them seriously and are prepared to speak out when we don't like things and speak out when we do too, until we're prepared to do that, we're not really very good politicians in our own right, so we can't expect the people we elect to be much better. And it's uh, it's too sad. It's uh, too bad. It's uh, I'm a political junkie. I love politics. I love freedom. I love democracy. And I love watching it work. But you'll never watch it work in this country. Rafe, thank you so much for chatting with us. Jim, always my pleasure. Check out Rafe's latest articles on his website, rafeonline.com. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.